What the- <clears throat> What up, ladies and gents, this is George Bean, and for this video, I thought it'd be good if I did a video talking about the upcoming Jurassic World 2 sequel, or better known as Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Now, to start things off, I grew up watching the Jurassic Park films, and have become a fan of the films. I even still still enjoy watching its sequel, The Lost World, specifically for its third act where the T-Rex rampages through San Diego. That was like the best part in the whole movie for me as a kid. The first Jurassic film was actually released in theaters one month after I was born in 1993. So yeah, the first Jurassic film is about as old as I am. So there's some form of resonance I have with, with Jurassic Park. Even as a kid, I would always build my own little cardboard model, folk art model of the Jurassic Park theme park with little toy dinosaurs included in it, and I would play around with the dinosaurs rampaging through the park. The, I mean, it was insane as a kid. My imagination just running wild. Now, in my late teens, uh, back in high school, I had gotten around to reading the original books, uh, the Jurassic Park and the Lost World. I can say that, say that there are scenes of the book that I would have loved to have seen included in the movie, uh, such as the river raft scene where Alan Grant and the two kids hurtle down, uh, down, uh, a river on a raft and being chased by T-Rex, but it's understandable why they cut it out uh, Because at that time the effects weren't advanced enough to bring that scene to fruition And of course in the book John Hammond who was played by Played brilliantly by the gentlemanly Richard Attenborough in this film was much more of a villainous greedy uh, greedy corporate antagonist in the book who desired to keep this his park running even when it was all going to shit around him. So he learned so in the book, John Hammond learns nothing from his mistakes, unlike his movie County Park. But again, it's understandable why uh, Hammond's character was changed to film, because he was played by Richard Attenborough, and I don't think we'd want to see Attenborough as a villain. But one thing I should mention is that the Lost World movie is drastically different from the plotline of Michael Crichton's similarly titled book. The reason I bring this up is that Crichton's book had intentionally titled his book The Lost World as an homage to the same title for, for to a book in 1912 by Sir, Car Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, which also featured also titled The Lost World, which also featured a similar premise of an expedition team exploring a piece of uncharted territory roamed by dinosaurs. However, in Crichton's novel, the dinosaurs were, were recreated by genetic engineering rather than surviving from antiquity like what happened in Doyle's book. And I just want to say, John Williams is my number one all-time favorite music composer ever, more so than any other composer in film. I shall listen to any and all the scores he has done on movies. Even his score on Hook was memorable to listen. And every time you w listen to the, the, to the uh, main theme to Home Alone, you immediately know uh, who composed it and the uh, what movie it was composed to. So it would, would be no surprise when I say that his music score on this film is astoundingly ma amazing to listen to, especially the main theme, which you can't help but hum to it. Now to say, John Williams hasn't scored any further the Jurassic films after The Lost World. Afterwards, Don Davis had composed the score for Jurassic Park 3, and now for Jurassic World, uh, uh, Michael Cicchino took over the music score. Uh, 
and is slated to return for the Fallen Kingdom sequel. Uh, se sequel. I will say, I have been a fan of Chikino's work. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, his scores for the Star Trek reboots uh, uh, series, The Incredibles, Super 8, and even John Carter, which is a guilty pleasure of mine. And now, after having heard this music score for War for the Planet of the Apes, uh, I am honestly very happy to have Chikino scoring these new films. Uh, now to get on uh, with Jurassic World, uh, I had gotten to see it in cinemas uh, back in t 2015 uh, when I was uh, like uh, 22 years old, and to be honest, I really enjoyed it. It was my very first Jurassic for film to have seen in cinemas, and so you could understand my enjoy enjoyment. Uh, my joy in seeing it. I like the premise of it centering on a Jurassic Park that is now open and functional, up and running, and that it had become more popular than Disney World and Six Flags combined. It was an idea that has been going through my head ever since I first watched the, the first film. What if the what if the theme park actually worked? And Jurassic World did that perfectly. And I also love the main dinosaur antagonist, the Indominus Rex in Jurassic World. It almost reminded me of the shark in Jaws. And I was also intrigued by what they were hinting at. The idea of cloned dinosaurs becoming open source and possibly being weaponized for combat. It gives the possibility of the Jurassic ser series delving into new story ideas without having to rehash what it already worked before. So when the Jurassic World sequel was uh, being developed, I was closely watching uh, the filmmakers, mostly co-writer Colin Trevel, Trevorrow, who was originally supposed to direct Star Wars Episode Nine uh, until he was booted off for wait for quote-unquote creative differences we're discussing specifically that the upcoming sequel would be different in terms of storyline and tone <sighs> meaning that it would not revolve an, around the theme park yet again but they could but would explore new story threads about the dinos going open source and that it would be more quote-unquote scary and suspenseful than its predecessors. I was very much interested in what they were saying, especially when it was announced that J.A. Bayona of The Orphanage fame was to direct the new the film now. Trevor once said that the sequel story had been inspired by two certain quotes, the first said by Alan Grant in the first film, which was Dino quote, dinosaurs and man, two species separated by 65 million years of evolution, have suddenly been thrown back into the mix together. How can we possibly have the slightest idea of what to expect? End quote. And as for the other quote, was inspired by the idea that, quote, a mistake made lo a long time ago just can't be undone. End quote. They had even talked about how they extensively read Michael Crichton's books to immerse themselves into their into their work, and are apparently going to going so far as con including dialogue from the original books that was not in the movies. Even Jeff Goldblum later had dialogue from the novel version uh, of of his character added into the sequel script. Uh, I am liking what I am hearing from all of this, and in all honesty, if you ask me, I like that it's going for a more darker and horror-themed approach, because when you think about it, if you read the original uh, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park book, 
it is much more graphic and bloody than the actual film. I mean, hard R-rated uh, graphic. Huh? Like, for example, when Dennis Nedry uh, is killed by the Dilophosaurus, it slashes his stomach open, causing his intestines to fall out. Something we had never actually got to see in the film, which was more PG-13 rated. As we see in the teaser trailer, we see that the film is set four years after the events of Jurassic World, by which point the titular theme park has now become a dilapidated ruin, and now Owen Gray, Grady and Claire Daring, both played by Star, Star Lord Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, having to return to Island New Nublar to rescue the dinosaurs before the island's dormant volcano erupts. Why the volcano is suddenly erupts? Uh, because reasons. Which would wipe, wipe the island off the face of the earth, bringing dinosaurs back into extinction. Keep in mind, according to Trevorrow, what we've seen in the teaser trailer was actually the first hour of the film and that the second half would be quote-unquote surprising and more horror theme. And to be honest, I think it is a really good idea of not revealing many major scenes from the second half in the trailer just yet, unlike what most trailers tend to do now nowadays. I'm looking at you, Terminator Genesis. You have never learned your lesson from Terminator Salvation's trailer, having done the exact same thing. And if you ask me, I do hope they still keep with that. Only show us extremely minute scenes in the second half. Maybe show us a minor suspenseful moment. But do not spoil whatever major, major twist you have planned for us. For when we actually see the movie in cinema. Do what, do what Jaws did. Uh, did uh. Do not reveal the main monster until the theatrical release. We Yes, we all suspect the, the di new dinosaur's name is to be the Indoraptor, but don't show it uh, to us yet. I mean, we never got to see what the Indominus Rex looked like uh, in the Jurassic World trailers until we, we finally saw the movie, only glimpses. Even the original Jurassic Park trailer kept that in mind. You never got to see the dinosaurs until we actually saw the movie, and it looked amazing when we finally saw it. And again, speaking of the major twist I mentioned earlier, the plot summary said that during their rescue mission on the island, Owen and Claire apparently end up, quote, discovering a conspiracy that could result in di dinosaurs becoming the Earth's dominant species once again. End quote. So this is just me speculating, but based on based on what's been hinted at us in the previous film and Trevor's comments, I sus I suspect that the movie's going to reveal that the conspiracy is some big corporate man seeking to use the dinosaurs for his own ulterior purposes, likely open source the clone dinosaurs to profit off of it. And looking at the cast. James Cromwell is slated to play a man named Benjamin Lockwood, who is said to have been John Hammond's partner in planning to in pl planning to develop to uh, te the technology to clone dinosaurs. If you ask me, in speculating, I sus I suspect that Lockwood will be our human antagonist for the movie. I mean, it has to be another big reason why B.D. Wong's character, Dr. Henry Wu, is returning in this film. As seen in the previous film, he appears to be slowly turning into a Frankensteinian mad scientist with a growing complex. I expect them to make the clone dinosaurs into the new master race. Uh, Sounds like it may possibly continue the series theme of how mankind's tampering into genetic cloning, technology of which is yet to un of which we have yet to understand, could possibly result in our our own self destruction. 
So yeah, based on my speculating, I believe we'll be getting a Lost World meets Aliens uh, plot kind of plot line in this film. The first half will be like a, will be like the Lost World, an action adventure centering on a rescue operation to save the dinosaurs from the island's erupting volcano, and then in the second half. Based on my speculating the vault Fallen Kingdom title, we will then travel to a museum in London to confront Benjamin Lockwood and his conspiracy. But then, no surprise, uh, twenty bucks says, betting twenty bucks out of this, things will go horribly wrong and the dinosaurs will get loose and stalk through the museum, turning the movie into a sort of Aliens, but with dinosaur-style claustrophobic, claustrophobic horror film, fitting more in line with J.A. Bayona's style and direction in horror. Trevor had even gone on to describe the film as uh, the impossible meets the orphanage with dinosaurs, which is also a very fitting description of the this film. Now, what I should mention is that, based on Bayona's t statements, Fallen Kingdom is intended to be the second chapter to a new Jurassic World trilogy. Comparing the middle chapter to, to films like uh, Star Trek The Wrath of Khan and The Empire, the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, but according to what uh, Trevor had re recently said, that Fallen Kingdom, Fallen Kingdom's ending will not end on a cliffhanger, but ha has, sa has said that it will end in such a way that it will leave moviegoers wanting more, and hopefully leave them even more excited for the third Jurassic World film. Oh, and also, as we all know, Jeff Goldblum is returning as Dr. Ian Malcolm in this film albeit in a small special appearance. Goldblum and Bayona had stated that Malcolm's role would simply be a cameo and doesn't exact, does not exactly have a major role in the action, but it's, they say it's defi definitely a very meaningful one in terms of the story. In honesty, I do hope that his cameo is worth it, and is given a big purpose for being in it, rather than just being there for the sake of having a, an old character from the previous film returning for a cameo. The Be Bayona once considered Malcolm to be a great character, and according to producer Frank Marshall, the world has changed, quote, the world has changed a lot since Ian Malcolm uh, went to Jurassic Park, and we need his point of view now more than ever. He's told us about chaos theory, and he was right. Quote, unquote. So yeah, it sounds like his cameo will have a resonation to uh, the sequel storyline. Possibly the argument that dinosaurs should continue to coexist in peace, etc. Even the see, Fallen Kingdom's poster's tagline quotes what he had previously said in the first film, that tagline being, quote-unquote, life finds a way. But to conclude this fil video, I am really excited for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I believe this is going to blow its predecessor, Jurassic World, out of the water in terms of storyline quality, and a director who damn well knows how to direct horror properly. I have, I have high hopes for this new film. I am excited for what new story directions they are planning to go, and ultimately, I believe this movie is going to take the old Jurassic fans by surprise, even me. And most of all, one important positive for the element for this film, Bryce Dallas Howard will not be running in high heels again this time around. So thanks for watching, ladies and gents. I do, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and until then, 
I'll see y'all next time. And this, to end this video on a quote, Dr. Grant, my dear Dr. Sadler, welcome to Jurassic Park. Peace.